You're still watching Ways. Now, National Caregivers Day is observed annually on the third Friday in February. Across the nation, dedicated healthcare professionals serve those who require long-term or hospice care. Now, National Caregivers Day honors those men and women dedicated to providing these vital services. Ladies, it's such an important role. Absolutely. I think whoever you are out there, you're a, you're a caregiver, we love you and we celebrate you on this day. Yeah. yeah Have you ever had, um, had to stay in the, in the hospital? Yes. For some it, few days yeah. to tend to someone who is yeah. ill? Yes. yes. It's the hardest job it's ever. It's a lot of work. Your life practically stops. So hold. I was in the hospital till 10. I, I told you I had a minor emergency yesterday in the group. I was mm -hmm. in the hospital till 10. All, my friends, all her children, like practically all at her the same children, time. all at the same time, having, the, as this one is vomiting, the next person is vomiting, okay. in the hospital somebody is vomiting. Uh, you know, yeah, there there's should be something, something in the air. In, though, yeah, like it's a lot. Of, so for me, I, I, when I see caregivers, I really, really appreciate their work. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had an opportunity before in my life. I took care of my granddad before he passed. Mm -hmm. You know, I actually loved doing it, mm -hmm. you know. But my granddad used to say something that if he, he if there's any reason he, he becomes a vegetable and a burden to he his would family, just go. that he please God should take his life. So yeah. when he saw it, so I knew, I, I knew that was, was good. He because to go. He, the day he, like he was partially, um, he had a partial, partial stroke. stroke. So I was trying to clean him up, myself and my cousins and all of that. So I saw a tear drop in his oh eyes. He couldn't say anything. I just knew that, you know. By the time I got to school, they had it called me. It was almost time. Was well, I, I, I always hear about people having stroke, partial stroke and all that, but I've never been close to one yeah. until I recently I got close to someone I knew who, when he was in his heydays. Oh, wow. When I saw him, I was shocked. I said, so this is what stroke is. So we need you to will be thankful for good health. <laughs> oh my. All right, so what did we find in the news? All right, who's going first? <laughs> I can go first. Yeah. All right. So the federal government announced yesterday that finally um, the two runways at the Murtala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos have now been ca uh, calibrated for the Category 3 instrument landing system and is now safe for landing. Ah. So what had happened earlier in the week uh, was that the national flight had to be yeah. diverted. Mm -hmm. They couldn't Ghana. land. And Dakar, Senegal, as far as Senegal, because uh -uh. of bad weather. And imagine how stranded people would have been. Imagine how disconcerting it is. You've, you've traveled, you're now in Ghana. You have to buy your own flight ticket out of there. Mm. Lots of business deals that have been canceled. Lots of people coming to Lagos for, But the aspect know, I did not understand is why do you have to buy your ticket? So that was the there. thing. That was the thing. I understand that uh, um, British Airways was doing the abandoned yeah. them and all that. But and I, I should think they should have a record. It's, it's, it was just See. a lot of work. And so what had happened was um, they had to optimize the navigational equipment, but they didn't do it completely. And Imagine just... the shock taping <laughs> on the plane. And I, th I heard one that they were about landing. And the pilot already said, uh, you know, this usual uh, prepare for anything. landing and all that. And took off again and faced Ghana. Can you at that point, it's just you know, so at that worrying. point, you would understand what was going on. Hmm. I know myself because <laughs> I. Know, that is ah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, so, what? I mean, Ghana? Hey, it's really so. sad because I, 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 and I hear that, you know, not many people could, you know, you know, sometimes. You spend your last penny on those just no, I do that. Like, no, yeah. no, I do that. Most times, we travel. Yeah, yeah, so I don't feel so like a lot of them anything. could not even afford to get a flight ticket you know, from goodness. Ghana so we can't to. But who's responsible? That's what I. That's what you know. We can't be here responsible it's with this terrible. thing. It's, it's terrible. It's terrible. But we need to move on. But at the end of the day, thank <laughs> right, you. Fine. know, I mean, that has been sorted. So we're okay. happy. Okay. So let's 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 hear your story. Okay. The Olubo of Iwo suspension. Anthony Joshua. <laughs> you know what struck me about the story was like, um, have we gone down? Have we really gone this? As you know, in a monarchy, yeah. You know, I understand Nigerians. Yes, so the regular upset, Nigerians. You know, it was, no. he's human first. So what, what was the story? The okay, there was a particular but. peace meeting that was scheduled between him and other monarchs in his um, domain, and this meeting took place at the police station. I think the police commissioner was there, the AIG, and quite a number of important, you know, dignitaries and all that, personalities rather. And I don't know, one thing led to the other. And this Oluwo is a first-class monarch. 
actually went for another monarch and actually bruised him. Whoa. A physical com combat between two <laughs> monarchs. It's shocking to me. In Nigeria. Like, who, who, how, how was the selection process? Was the, was, how did they get nominated for the throne? I do not understand. It's well. We'll just leave it there. <laughs> He's fine. Yeah. He'll be fine. I, I think after the suspension. I thought they were going to be thrown. I, 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 you were I, clamoring for the... For them is to, it, yeah. Is it enough grounds to oh, do that? Of course. Okay, all right. So of course. All right, so my story is quite an interesting one. I picked this story because particularly I'm really, really, you know, upset all the time when I see certain things happen. Now, there's call for review of the electricity tariff in Nigeria. And this call was made by the, um, the director, the chief executive officer of the Transmission Company of Nigeria. That's Usman Mohammed. He was saying that whether we like it or not, you know, we, we have can to no longer more. sustain what we're paying and all of that for for electricity. That all over the world, electricity is expensive, and so they have to, I mean, go back and review the prices for um, the electricity. He said he was saying something about subsidy that that, that currently we're paying about 1.7 trillion or something. Subsidized. Whatever it is, okay. you know. So what, why I picked the story for me is 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 very annoying. Now, you, you increase minimum wage to 30,000. Mm -hmm. You go with the other hand, increase your VAT, VAT to 7.5. Every time there is a problem, why can't we begin to think about ways to solve this problem other than returning the burden back to the people that are already suffering? Mm -hmm. It does not make any sense. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? There are a lot more. I'm sure if they bring in the brains that we have in Nigeria to come and find solutions to this problem. Now, let me take you just one that I know of. In, my, in a compound that I know, I will not mention the person. This person was not paying electricity bill. They bypassed air conditioners, bypassed everything. So by the time the discourse came, he slammed them with a bill of 2.5 million. Why? Because they had bypassed everything. There are leakages already happening in the mm -hmm. in electricity. So mm -hmm. can we first of all wait before you say you want to increase tariff or whatever? Mm -hmm. Go and block off all those leakages, trap all the money. Let ensure that people are paying for the electricity. And go and check most of these people in government offices. Don't pay. They don't pay. Go and check them. They don't pay. Most of the utilities that they use, they do not pay for it. So oh, wow. why don't we start from there? You know, like it's, it's really annoying. <laughs> so I took this story because I sent it 6 a.m. That I'm was calm. how upset I was. Oh, well, <laughs> my take on the story yeah. is that I think like, as Nigerians, the reality is that we have to pay more. We will pay. But, but what, what the snag saying? is that we have to know why we're paying more. And they haven't justified that. It's not only even justification right but now. The, the, no. the power is epileptic. Right? That's what yes. I'm so, saying. No, so wait. why do I have to Hold pay on, more for it? And there are a lot of leakages. Go and check the number of people paying bills in this country. There are very few. Yes, so why can't you first of all think about trapping all the money? Then all the money that they have invested in the power, um, what's it called, sector. What have they done for done to it? Have they accounted for all those money? Billions. From Obas on just regime? Billions. So, but these Come are on. being privatized now. And then the, uh, the discos and the jenkos are saying that they're running at a loss because they're not charging optimal rates. So we get that. Um, there's some subsidy on the side of the government. We can't account for exactly where the money is going to. You know to. what? Right. Don't, but don't can never, let's, let's, let's not fight. fight. Let's when not it comes fight. Let's it's fine. But there's still no light. That's all we Sha. can take. That's all we know. <laughs> That's all we can but take. I'm paying double anyway. <laughs> ah. And I'm saying that. And you're saying, right. Well, I mean, the future is. 24 hours light. Ola Kule Sherry. Now you live in, you know, Can you listen to me right now? Absolutely. The future is Ola Kule Sherry. Join us after the break.